All right, welcome back to discrete mass structures. Uh, this time we're going to be talking about uh, algorithms. All right, so let me get my pen out here and we'll get started. So first, what are algorithms? An algorithm is a finite sequence of precise instructions for performing a computation or for solving a problem. Typically, um, they're used to describe, or they're described using computer languages, but oftentimes we can express them in pseudocode, which is kind of like uh, plain English version of algorithms, and they typically have input and output, and they tend to be finite and correct. So here's an example of an algorithm. Um, we're going to find the maximum element of a sequence. So um, let's go ahead and define it. So first we're going to start uh, in by passing in A as an input, which is going to be the set here of all the elements in the sequence. So we start off by setting uh, the max equal to the first element, and then we go for uh, from 2 to the size of A, and we're going to check each element to see um, if the current max is less than the element that we're at, then we're going to set the current element um, to the max. And then by the end we should have our max, so we just return it. So that's an example of an algorithm. So uh, typically we want to know the time and space used to run um, a given algorithm. Since memory is usually cheap, we tend to focus more on speed, or the time it takes to run it. Since the actual running time of algorithms will vary greatly on different hardware, we look at a more mathematical approach to determine the number of instructions executed. And we tend to use big O, big, o, big theta, and big omega, mega to describe algorithm running times. So this is big O notation. And it's used to analyze the asymptotic behavior of functions. Uh, it's sort of to show an upper bound of a function. So we say that f of x is big O g of x if and only if um, there exist constants c and x naught such that for all x uh, greater than or equal to x naught, the um, absolute value of f of x is less than or equal to the absolute value of c times g of x, so some constant c. Right. And like I said, it's used to show an upper bound. So here are a few examples of it being applied. Uh, clearly, 2x is going to be big O of x because it differs only by this constant here, uh, 2. And we can note that 2x is going to be big O of x squared, right? Because if we just take, um, for example, uh, all x greater than, uh, let's say, 2, it's going to, um, x squared is going to be greater than or equal to 2x, right, for all x, uh, greater than or equal to 2. Uh, let's take another case, uh, the natural log of x. Let's uh, draw the natural log graph just to see what it looks like. It's going to look something like this. And then um, x is going to look something like that. Clearly, it's going to be um, an upper bound to the natural log. And thus, if we multiply both sides by x, we can see that x natural log x is going to be big O of x squared. And this is a key relationship in sorting, because a lot of uh, sorting algorithms have running times of um, n log n and n squared, where n is the number of elements in this um, data structure that we're trying to sort. So um, we can use our definition to prove the asymptotic behavior of functions. So for instance, let's prove that uh, n squared over 2 minus n over 2 plus 1 is big O of n squared. So we're going to let our x not be 1, and then we're going to go ahead and solve for c. So um, we have our relationship right here, and we're going to go ahead and plug in our 1. So that just leaves 1 half minus a half plus 1 is less than or equal to c. Therefore, um, c is greater than or equal to 1. So since there exists, exists c and x naught such that this relationship holds true uh, for all n greater than x naught, we say that this uh, first function here is big O of n squared, uh, thus completes the proof. So an important big O relationship to remember is that uh, given a polynomial of degree n, right here, uh, and whatever constant coefficients 
are on the terms. We say that f of x is going to be big O of x to the n. And we also say that um, this f of x of degree n is going to be um, big O of um, any degree polynomial of x bigger than n. So, um, for instance, x is going to be big O of x squared. That's what I'm meaning by there. And it's also important to note that n factorial is going to be big O of n to the n, right? Because n factorial is just going to be the product of the numbers from uh, 1 to n, right? So we've got this relationship right here to denote this, where the big pi is simply um, just like big sigma. So this would just stand for product instead of sum. And then n to the n is going to be, uh, over the same number of variables, it's just going to be n, which is that uh, upper number. So uh, if we take um, for all n greater than or equal to 1, this relationship has to hold true, right? So consequently, because of this, um, if we take the log of both sides, we can see that n log of n factorial is going to be n log n. And then uh, another really important one is that uh, the log of any number of any base number of n is going to be just big O log n. So because the base doesn't really matter, right? Because we can just change the bases uh, by using a logarithm of any base, right? So let's say this was log base d. Uh, it's completely inconsequential, right? So um, how does this big O uh, relate to algorithms? Well, we can find a function to estimate the running time of an algorithm, and then we can determine its asymptotic behavior from there. So let's take, for example, our find max function. Uh, we can notice that this instruction right here, the max equals a1 and return max, these are both executed once. So these are both what we call big O of 1. They run in constant time. Right. So then the next piece is this for loop right here, and that runs uh, n minus 1 times, right? n minus 1. Hopefully that's clear. Because it starts from 2, and it goes to the end of a, which is n, right? So n is going to be the cardinality of a, so the number of elements in the data structure. So we say that our uh, function that estimates the running time, t of n, is going to be equal to 2 plus n minus 1. And this is clearly uh, big O of n from the relationship we saw on the other slide. So this fine max runs in what we call linear time, or big O of n. These two mean the same thing. So sometimes um, algorithms are composed of separate subroutines or functions within functions. We need to consider um, how to represent these running times, right? So consider functions um, f of x and g of x, they're just arbitrary functions. We say that uh, the sum of these two functions is going to be big O of g of x if g of x is the bigger one. Um, otherwise, it'd be f of x, which means uh, that that's the bigger one. So it's just big O of the bigger one, essentially because it's upper bound. So then uh, we also have to consider the product. So the product of f and g of x is going to be simply the product, um, big O, the product of their uh, running times. So uh, next we have to talk about big omega and big theta. So big omega uh, is very similar, if you notice from the definition. Uh, everything looks the same except for the direction of this inequality. I noticed that it's pointing the other way. That's because it is a lower bound of the running time, right? So same rules apply. This is just the lower bound. And then we also have big theta notation. And um, we say that f of x is big theta of g of x, if and only if. Um, it's both big, o big omega and big o, right? So it has to be uh, omega and o. So it's sort of like the average running time. And the similar rules for both of these can be used as big O notation. For example, the polynomial um, relationship that we saw earlier of degree n uh, can still hold for both of these. So then here's another proof with asymptotic notation. This time, uh, we're going to be using big omega. 
So we're going to start off by letting x0 be 0. We need to prove that 2 to the 2n is big omega 2 to the n. All right. So first, um, we have our inequality here. Then we divide both sides by 2 to the n, leaving that 2 to the n has to be greater than or equal to c. Since x0 is 0, uh, we have that c is going to be 2 to the 0, which is 1. So since we have found x0 and c, such that the original inequality holds, uh, we see that 2 to the n is big omega of uh, 2 to the n. And thus completes the proof. Thanks for watching.